Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Williams in Depth. I'm your host, Friendly Tree, and today I want to talk about Nina's Ivory Cutter. Okay, so as always, I don't want to spread any misinformation, so let's make sure our settings are all as we want. You can all view every setting we have on here. That's player frame data on, no counter hits, no nothing. Alright, so Ivory Cutter. Ivory Cutter is moved into 25 in Nina's move list, not to be mixed up with Reverse Ivory Cutter, and this is an input of 1 plus 4. Now because it's a 1 plus 4 input, I do strongly suggest that you have some kind of binding for these moves. So for example, this is the binding I have. If you can't see this quite right, that's, um, that's the R1, that's the R2, L1, L2. Or uh, if you've got the top four buttons on a stick, this is the third of the top, that's the fourth of the top, um, sorry, third of the top, that's the fourth of the top, that's the third of the bottom, that's the fourth of the bottom. So for me, it's my very top right button on my stick, that is the 1 plus 4. And the reason I suggest this is because if you're doing 1 plus 4, and you accidentally press it wrong, you won't get it. And that can be quite awkward, especially if, you, well, if you're using this move and suddenly you drop it, when you could easily do this. And likewise for Reverse Ivory Cutter, the last thing you want is to accidentally get a back one. Oh, it happens so often. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, back to Ivory Cutter. So if we look at the properties of this move, it's 15 frame startup. And you see there's a 13 frame gap between the second. Both moves have two frames, two active frames. Negative five on block, plus four on hit. And you'll see here, force crouch only on hit, okay? So that means If I'm hit by this, I recover crouching, which does mean I cannot sidestep into the foreground, not with a conventional joystick or controller at least. So that's quite valuable to know for pressure. So we've got 15 frame startup, two moves, it does a total of 24 damage. You notice the first hit only does 4 damage, and that's quite important for something that I'm going to discuss in a moment. But first, let's look at the range. So, it's, I'd say it's about 2.4 range, so if we get to about 2.4 here, and we do it, it'll work. If I get to about 2.45, the first hit will whiff. And you can visually see by this move that, it's kind of hard, it's kind of fast, but her leg, which is the second hit, is, it is much greater range. So that's why. <laughs> um, it is of course a natural combo, so if the first hit hits, the second hit hits, um, it's jailable, but it's mid-mid, so it doesn't really matter anyway. It's a true block string, so if they block the first, they can press wherever they want, they will not get hit by the second. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was about the four damage on the far on the first hit. So this move has no special properties on counter hit or crouching opponent, and unfortunately, it's not great for a trade. So with the down back three being minus four, 11 frame trade there. So if you look here, I'm doing 18 damage. They're doing, what is it, like 5 damage because it's counter hit. 6 damage. And it's neutral. So I do still recover crouching, but there's no frame advantage. So it's not really a move you want to use for trades. There's no... You'll usually be at a disadvantage unless, I guess you... Okay, even a jab does more damage. Even a... Yeah, so because it's only 4 damage, it's completely useless, useless for trades, in my opinion. Tracking. So if we set them to guard, side step left, you're going to see here, unfortunately, its tracking isn't as good as you'd want. So if we're at minus 1, so a jab, sorry, it's plus 1. If we're at minus 1, like that, you can see they can step it. At plus 1, it can catch. Oops. So minus one, minus one or anything worse. Sorry. It's okay, but variable. Um, it will catch, but it's sort of variable. So if you do it at minus one or at plus one, you're gonna notice a bit of a difference. But if you go to later frames, it's, it's very hit or miss. So you've gotta be very familiar. Plus one here, you can see. So that even just depends on the move there. 
so because of the range, because there's more pushback, I suppose. Right, that didn't hit. Yeah. So you can see, unfortunately, it doesn't have amazing tracking. But if you lab the situations, you're going to find, yeah, a different frame advantage. It can track. So just make sure you're not using it at those sort of low frame advantage situations. Um, you'd generally be wanting to use it when you're more plus, I suppose. And that will work. Yeah. Alright. Um, the other thing about it, oh, we've talked about the range. We haven't talked about other properties, like properties in a combo. So, this move causes a bound. If you've played Tekken 6 or Tekken Tag 2, you'd be familiar with the bound mechanic, which is spikes into the ground like that. And you'll notice if they get down like this, they cannot, none of these mechanics will work. So, none of the stand up options will work. Ground techniques, they cannot tech crawl either. So, if I do a tech here, now, the only options they have are to stay grounded, to stand up, or do a back quick roll. And pretty much every situation I can think of, you want to be doing a back quick roll. Because if you don't do a back quick roll there, then you get a guaranteed hit. Alright. So with this, with this in mind, you can understand how it might be quite valuable to use in combos to end a combo, and particularly in wall hits. But we'll get onto that in a moment. Um, okay, I think that's everything we need to cover with the properties of the move. So it's mid mid, 15 frame start up, 24 damage, variable kind of tracking, but tracking usually works when you're at a bit of an advantage, so it can catch people in situations they'd like to attack. Like to attack. Range 2.4, and the properties of a bound move. It does also cause a floor break, so if you're on either of the stages that have floor break potential, this is a good move for you to use. Alright, I think that's everything for properties. Okay, so application of Ivory Cutter. Where do I start with this one? There's so many ways that you could apply this move if you want. Um, it does come down to the character you're versing a lot of the time. And I'll go into a few specifics of that in a little while. But first, let's just talk about a few other things. So it's a 15 frame mid poke that is safe. Minus 5 even. So what you could do from that at minus 5 is you can just sort of throw it out there and you can create a mind game from it because it's the same sort of scenario as doing that. That's very similar at least. So you could do something like that. If they retaliate, let's say retaliate with something slower. Yeah, there we go. You can use it you can use it as a tool to create a whip. Likewise, you could use it as a tool. I'm sorry, we want it blocked. Oh my god, Nina's down for two whip reaches. Okay. That might be a bit slow. Yeah. Anyway, you can use it as a tool to try and create a whip if you want. You could even do like a back sway after it or something like that. Um, but it's definitely got its place to be thrown out just as a safe 15 frame mid that is two hits and forces crouch. So with the force and crouch in mind, with it's plus four force and crouch, it's pretty much the same situation as a down back three. If you look at the range you put in, it's very similar. It's pretty much the same situation. So with that in mind, any way that you're using down back three to start pressure, this is a mid option that's five frames faster start up and more damage, that can get the same situation for you. So it's a good tool just to use to begin pressure and do it at pretty low risk, as long as the move doesn't whiff. But even then, because it's two hits, it can be a bit deceptive for people. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can also use it as a check in general. So I talked before about how it's an unfavorable trade. So if you're at plus four and you do do that again, you're not at an advantage, and I suppose that's because they're trying to stop people from being able to just do that over and over and over again. But, 
if you're at greater frame advantage, it can pretty much catch anything they do. So, go record. So plus six. And I can't backdash out of that. I can't step out of it. And with this move, I'm force crouched, so I can't. I can only start stick in one direction. So it, it's frame tight from a plus six situation, which hey, there's also that move on block. And I mean, you've got other moves you can use to get you in similar situations. So even just that, or that, or hey, what about the 14 frame punish? So there are a lot of scenarios you can use this as a pretty, well, as a very low risk check. That's a mid check, does decent damage, and keeps pressure on the opponent. You can also use it in the other other sort of way, where you're doing it. What am I talking about? Sorry. You can do it to start pressure, and you can do it so you're checking afterwards and continuing your pressure. Um, you've got to be careful what character you're doing this against. For example, if I'm doing oh, card all back dash. Turn those back to me. Sorry. So against Nina, that's going to work. But if we go to everyone's favourite, Safina, her movement is going to show us once again that this is not a matchup you want to be using. You want to be using this move a little bit more cautiously or in a little bit more of a situational sense. It's things like that, she can backdash. And likewise. Not that one, what was it? Oh, it was doing this into a downfall one or something. Because because doing that into that can be quite unfavourable. If you're thinking about doing a downfall one there, be careful against Safina because she can avoid it very easily. So you've got to be careful with your matchups there. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about was using it in combos. So first off, I mentioned before about the back quick roll. So if they don't do a back quick roll, you get guaranteed damage from it. But if they do a back quick roll, they're forced to back rise in a linear way. So that can help you apply your pressure and push them to the wall more easily. Um, using it in combos, so let's just say... 55 damage. 55 damage. So it's the same ender because it's the two hits. The scaling it makes it so it's the same as ending in a blonde bomb. So it's just for mixing up your Oki in that scenario. And with this in particular, of course, if they don't quick back roll, then you get a guaranteed hit. And if they do quick back roll, you're keeping it to a rather linear situation. Now, I've got to be careful when I say linear here because if I do something like this. They can still sidestep a while running on plus two. So it's not linear in the sense that they get up and they have to block that for guaranteed pressure, but you are pushing them back, you're making them either quick back roll or get a guaranteed hit. So you're pushing them further to the wall than you might get from doing something like that, where they can tech roll and more easily avoid situations, I should say. You're putting them in a different situation, which may be less familiar to them because they've been locked to only waking up one particular way and then acting, opposed to being knocked down and acting a certain way to get up. I hope that makes sense. Let's go... We've got two more stages we need to go to now. So we're going to go to the Mission of Dojo. First off, we're just going to talk about standard wall hits. So... This is pretty much her bread and butter wall hit combo because of the pressure that it gives her afterwards. You'll notice if you do this combo it's a little bit less damage so for example 45 damage opposed to if we do 52 or 54. You can do another route if you did after a down foot one same damage but it's just good to be aware of. Let's say you run up and you panic. You panic. You're two down for one. That 
or you can also do down forward one two into it. So there are a few different ways. So you can go dun. Yeah. If you want to be fancy. Yeah. So you've got different ways that you can do the combo. But of course we're looking at the scenario after it. So this is important with what I talked about with the combos before. How it keeps them in a linear wake up because they've only got one option. So you can do this and then knock down there, which means you've got a number of different options which are guaranteed. A lot of people do quarter circle forward two or forward forward one plus two, especially with its wall bounce properties. Other options might be down back three, down three plus four, or even a forward forward four. So I'll show you the forward forward four here. Oh wow. Good work, forward forward four. Good work, good work. Huh. I'm doing it too early, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if they do a quick back roll. You've got that pressure, so you've got that frame advantage from it being a clean into a tech roll. So that's oh God. I clearly don't use this option very often. Yeah, you can see because it's putting you at plus nine in crouch, so you can continue pressure that way. Other options you could do are things like oh, geez. getting all my inputs today do an evil mist. So because they're because they're linear and they wake up, you've got so many options here. But yeah, common ones are down back three to continue that frame advantage. Quarter circle forward two to get the wall splat. These options are all hit if they stay grounded or get up. Well, if they get up they have to block it. If they get up they're getting into a 50-50. Or, as of Season 2, a lot more people are using that because it's a wall bounce and the frame advantage, if you compare it to the other, so that's minus 8, minus 5. So you're at less of a frame disadvantage if you use that option instead. That's how you can use it at the wall anyway. So. Very common sort of options. You get the idea. So that's how you can use it in the wall combo there. Next, we're gonna go. Oops. Next, we're gonna go to a wall break stage. And I know we've got a new one now, but we're still gonna go to the Forgotten Realm. So this would be one of her primary wall breaks. So for example, you just do the same wall hit that I did before. Then you've got a few guaranteed options. Up forward three, one, two, one plus two is a nice easy one. And there's another common option people do, and this is um, another one of the interesting mechanics of any sort of spike or bound move. If you hit people in a certain position, they can't do the quick back rise and they're stuck. So after we do the wall break here, you do another ivory cutter, and they can't get up and you get a guaranteed forward forward 1 plus 2 there or quarter circle forward 2 depending on what you want and just so you can see the forward forward 1 plus 2 will flip them over like uh, the quarter circle forward 2 will flip them over like that so that's different scenarios you can use that in um, I will just quickly mention the beers in this situation. So when Tekken 7 first came out on console, Nina had an infinite on the beers because of that because of that position and them unable to do a quick back roll after the wall break. So they patched that out and the way they patched that out 
Because by making the move not work on bears anymore. So you can no longer do any of these routes to get the break on bears. Because they've rendered that move useless against the bears at the wall. That's likewise for normal wall hits as you can see, so that wasn't just that it wasn't breaking, it was that it doesn't work at the wall. Now the bears have more damaging wall hits you can do on them because of their size, and that's for another video. But instead, at the moment, I'm just going to demonstrate what most people do. So most people just replace the ivory cutter at the wall with down 343. Three. So the whole part, so you do that instead. And then you can do the ivory cutter there, and like that. By the way, did you know that Blonde Bomb hits the bears on the ground regardless? So you don't have to do a forward, forward, one plus two. <laughs> okay, um, the last little bit of application I'm going to do is going to just talk about Ling Zhou Yu, because she's a common character that everyone says, oh yeah, use, um, use Ivory Cutter against her, it's great. And it is. So I've, I've dabbled in using Ling myself, of course, but I don't know how to use her very well. But there are a couple of just different AOP frame traps or situations where Ling goes into AOP and you might not have another tool that works very well against her. So what we're going to do is we're going to record this whiffing because I think that'll be the best timing. Okay. So we do this. And you'll notice well, that works. She gets out of the way of a lot of things. A lot of Nina's mids. She goes right through there. But Ivory Cutter is an amazing check for AOP in general. So it's a good move just to stop Ling from doing anything. And the great thing about it is, as I said before, it's pretty low risk. So. I mean, at Nick 9, it's sort of. Obviously it's going to beat anything she does there, but um, well, it's going to beat most things. Anything that's too threatening, I should say. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a good check just to use on Ling because it does catch AOP. And if you get it wrong and they don't do AOP, hey, you're not at that much of a disadvantage, are you? So it can be very valuable in that situation. Um, there are other scenarios like this too. Often it's just a good way to interrupt stance characters. But we won't worry too much with that now. With Zafina, like I said before, it's you can use it against her stances, especially her low stances. But just be cautious if she's out of stance. So choose your situations wisely when to use it. Um, I think that's everything I want to talk about with Ivory Cutter. So in summary, Nina's Ivory Cutter 1 plus 4 is a 15 frame mid mid lock string natural combo that does 4 damage and then 20 damage for a total of 24 damage. It can track to both directions depending on the frame situation at the time you use it. It is plus on hit being plus 4 and minus 5 on block as we will see here. and it forces crouch on hit. It can be used as, well, it can be used to create frame traps. It can be used to start pressure as a, as a safe mid. It can be used during the frame trap. So it can be used at frame advantage to trap people. Depending on the character you're versing, it can beat people back dashing or sidestepping for frame traps. It can be also be used for combos to cause a wall bounce. It can be used for, to create Oki at the wall, and it can cause a wall break. It has a lot of character specific applications, such as shutting down character stances as well. So that's Ivory Cutter. Let me know how you use Ivory Cutter. Do you think it's a good move of Nina's? What situations do you think it's best in? Do you use it at all, or do you find that it's one to move that gets forgotten? Anyway, comment below and let me know. Thanks for checking out my video everyone, and I'll catch you next time. You win. What's done is done.